What's up, fam? Welcome back to the R Lounge. Every truth has two sides. It is as well to look at both before we commit ourselves to either. Today on R Lounge, we learn to look at the whole picture. Our first mother-in-law thinks she's the main character of the story. Mother-in-law wants to call herself my child's mother. How would you deal with your mother-in-law calling herself your child's mommy? Or her second mommy? She started this since before my daughter was born. My daughter is four. She won't let it go. Luckily, she lives five hours away, but is visiting every other weekend. She puts me down in front of my daughter, who is old enough to now mock me with the same words my mother-in-law uses. She obviously doesn't know what she's saying. She's tried to take her out of my arms while actively nursing because she deemed the nursing session over. I'm celiac and I honestly feel like she's gluten to me. It's her way or the highway. She's never told no, with me as the exception. I've tried boundaries and rules, cutting her off. She's not allowed to be alone with my daughter. I even went to therapy with her upon my husband and her request to work things out. She has absolutely no respect for me. I honestly don't know what to do anymore. And guess who's coming down this weekend? She is the classic narcissist. She's homophobic, racist, hates Disney, gave us $3,000 to buy silver and gas, thinks the world is ending. There's so much more, but I'm already exhausted and just detailing those little moments. Help a mother out, the real mother. I would love to get along with her, but I feel like the damage is done and she's never actually going to change or respect me. We got through periods of calm, but then bam, she wants to be mommy again. Edit. A comment was made to the effect, this is half your fault. And to that I say, that's a little unfair. I've tried to mend a relationship with a woman who is going to be in my life for the next however long she's alive. I now know just because she is who she is doesn't give her an all-inclusive pass into our lives. I've put her in her place the best I can more times than I can count. And sure, it's my fault for continuing to put up with it, but you can't make someone act a certain way, say certain things, or listen to you. I agree it's now my turn to use my claws, so to speak, and it should have happened quite a long time ago. I've set boundaries. She's never been one with my child. We never go to visit her. We've chosen the grandparents' names and more. I guess I was more so thinking, if I keep saying don't do this and don't do that, she would listen. I've never in my life dealt with someone who completely disregards someone. At this point, I can at least say I tried it the nice way first. Now that my daughter is older, enough is enough. She treated me like crap for the first time and last in front of my child the last time she was here a few weeks ago and we haven't spoken since. My husband works all the time and he's not there for most of her antics, so I can only relay what she says. A lot falls on him too. We spoke for a long time last night, which is why I haven't had a chance to respond to any of your comments, which are welcomed and greatly appreciated. Thank you. He basically told her, it's my turn to tell her to F off and just pick up our dear daughter and leave the situation. And it doesn't matter what she thinks about it. So here we go, wish me luck. Our first comment comes from Buttercup303. Please don't tell her to buckle up. First thing, you need to call me out every time she tries to call herself mommy. Say in front of your child, oh, isn't granny being silly? She knows daddy's mommy, not yours. She knows she is your granny. Then when she mocks you, oh dear, granny is using unkind words again. Honey, what do we say about using unkind words? That's right. People shouldn't use unkind words because that is hurtful. You need to work with your daughter one-on-one -on -one to reinforce that you are mommy and she is granny. And if granny says anything different, she must be trying to be silly or maybe she's confused and needs to be corrected. Teach her to correct granny when granny does something wrong. Then you need to have a conversation with your husband. He didn't choose his parents. They chose to have him and raise him. And it was their obligation to put him first because he was a minor child who didn't get to choose. Your husband has chosen you as his wife. He made vows that chose you over his family of origin, mother. You and he chose to have a child. You and he have an obligation to raise a child in a safe, healthy, happy home. That is the obligation you both took on when you both chose to raise this child. You and his child come first before all others. You and your child are his future, the ones he chose to build his life around. The raising of your child is a temp job that ends when your child is a legal adult and moves out to build her own life. This is the circle of life. You and he have an obligation to raise the child well to become a happy, well-adjusted adult. 
His mother raised her kids. It was a temp job that ended when he became an adult and moved out. Her role as a grandmother is to be the occasional treat for the child and to respect the parents and defer to the parents' judgments in raising the child. This child is not her do-over baby. This child is your child, to raise. She has already raised hers. His mother is trying to alienate the child from you, the mama. This is not funny. This is not cute. This is parental alienation, and he should not tolerate his child being alienated from the child's mother. That is breaking his vows to you and his child. You and he don't get any do-overs. What he does now affects his child for the rest of her life. What she experiences now is her normal. It's how she thinks she is supposed to treat people, and it's how she learns to be in her relationships with future spouses, friends, and her future children. This is about the child's needs and your needs, not his mother's desires. She did her job and raised her children. It's now your time and hubby's time to appraise your child without any toxic influences. Hope this helps. Mecca DH0217 says, Honestly, it's been four plus years of the disrespect and it doesn't sound like your partner helps by defending you. What's his take on everything she does to you? I drop the rope. Make no effort with your mother-in-law. You've already said you don't let her be alone with your daughter, so don't let her be alone with you either. When she's visiting this weekend, she's your husband's problem. He needs to be home to entertain her. Don't let her stay with you. She's not helping you feel safe in what should be your safe place. Take your daughter out while she visits. Have some mommy-daughter time. Go to the park, shopping, a play center, anything that gets you out of the house. Don't give mother-in-law the opportunity to badmouth you. If she does, turn it back on her and make her explain why she's saying that in front of your daughter and husband. If he's not in the room when she makes a comment, wait until husband is back and repeat it. Martha, you just said... Why would you say that? Babe, why would your mother say something like that in front of the little one? Make them uncomfortable your daughter will pick up on the awkward energy and likely won't repeat the stuff mother-in-law says. The OP replies, He used to defend me and now he's basically given up. He says he hasn't given up and that he'll always have my back, but actions speak louder than words. And yet, here we are, still here and in a worse spot. His whole family is numb to it. It's rather sad. They just deal with it. I have never been like that, and that is what pisses her off the most. I'm the only one who says no to her. I have never allowed her to stay in our home. I've never let her visit our home. The last time she didn't tell anyone she was here and just came over. I told my husband what she said and that it was said in front of our daughter and that this was the last straw and he needed to say something to her. He agreed, but I'm 100% positive he never said a thing to her. Apparently, my feelings, boundaries, and words mean nothing to her. I'm actually afraid of her. She's unhinged when challenged. I do my absolute best to tell her off, but it's so hard when our daughter is there. I will protect my daughter from her at all costs. It's so hard to explain why she can't be around grandma. You should hear the guilt trip she puts on. Don't you want her to have a relationship with her grandmother? No, 1000 times no. I think if you're prepared to be branded as the bad guy for a little bit by your mother-in-law and whomever else, it's a price you have to gladly run towards in order to create some serious boundaries. These boundaries have to have consequences. It's like teaching a child at this point, right? Your mother-in-law is the child, or the old dog with the new tricks, so to speak. She does this to stay in control. I think your homework should also be trying to figure out why she acts the way she does. What happened in her childhood? How was she treated? What sort of trauma is she carrying? This might help you to make sense of things. And I will say that her past does not excuse her behavior towards you and the family. It's just to help you understand where it all comes from. Sometimes, context is all we need. Have you ever been in a similar situation? How did you resolve it? Up next, we can't be opposed to digging a little deeper for the truth. My mother-in-law likes her other daughter-in-law better. My husband's family has always been close. Last year, we tragically lost my husband in an accident. Since then, everything has been different, but recently I have noticed how much more my mother-in-law does and the way she acts towards her other daughter-in-law. Simple things like calling her sweetheart to offering to take care of their child. Recently, I took my son on our first overseas holiday. Not once did she message while we were away, but is messaging my sister-in-law every day while they are away. My mother-in-law is always saying how hard my sister-in-law is finding being a working mom and being away from her family. Meanwhile, I'm now a 28-year-old single mom who has lost her husband. I know there are bigger things to worry about, but it's now starting to get to me. I'm trying to hold a connection to my husband's family for our son, but she is making me feel belittled and unwelcome. Do I try to make more of an effort? 
Do I try to open up to her more or ask for her help more? Or do I start to cut myself off and take a step back? Ask for an opinion, you know you're gonna get it. Kitty Meow 1969 says, in my opinion, take a step back. Life is too short, as you already know, to put up with someone else's BS. I am sorry for your loss. True Duchess chimes in, leave the ball in her court and if she does reach out, take your time and consider what you actually want and how accommodating you want to be. It is absolutely okay if you want to move on with your life without your in-laws. You should know that watching cousins being favored by family is not going to be good for your son and you need to protect him from that. Finally, your mother-in-law is grieving a terrible, unthinkable loss. That could be why she avoids you because she's avoiding her own pain. I still think you should put yourself and little one first, but maybe it will help you realize, believe, that it isn't personal about you. Honestly, OP, your self-worth and value is not measured by what your mother-in-law thinks of you. At the same time, your mother-in-law is also in so much pain that she probably can't bear to be around you because you remind her of her son. She's grieving in her own way, and unfortunately, that means she's neglecting your relationship. I would open up with her and be absolutely transparent with what you're feeling. You're both grieving, and you might find some solace and comfort in each other. When a family member is rocked by death, it's important to turn to each other, not away. Should OP approach her mother-in-law and open up about her feelings? Let us know in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today. Before you go, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. We would hate for you to miss out on our next video. If you have feedback on today's content, please let us know in the comments below. See you next time.